Yep, definitely lied. I am talking about this again because apparently uh, there was no organizational structure. There wasn't really one. I figured, I think I figured it out. Uh, but uh, Mr. Beast as a corporation uh, is basically controlled by one person, more or less. But then you question certain... Anyway, I'm, I'm getting off topic. Anthony from Hashesnet, the internet politician. And today we're going to talk about some organizational structure stuff that came out in recent videos through uh, Dogpack404 and Jake Weddle. Because if anybody knows me, uh, they know that uh, I, I have a master's degree uh, in public administration and I basically majored in human resource management. So um, I did try to reach out to Jake Weddle uh, to see if he would be able to give me a more detailed structure of the actual corporation. Uh, he was not available. <laughs> I'll show the message here. So uh, I watched uh, uh, some videos, uh, broke, broke it down internally and uh, thought on it in a while. I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do another video. I said I wasn't going to do another video. But here I am because it's interesting. Uh, so I believe the hierarchy it's generally uh, a three-layer one, uh, and if you know anything about hierarchy, there, there's um, there's multi-layered, and then there's flat. Uh, for a like a five-leveled one, um, you would uh, you know have a CEO on top, and then work your way down. Uh, but we can't have that for Mr. Beast because we know Mr. Beast is in charge, and apparently he's not the CEO. Uh, but then there's the, the flat structures, you know, uh, you can have two, three tiers uh, instead of five, and um, maybe it's run by the board of directors. But uh, I don't think there is one. I mean, I made a guess, and I'll show that image in a sec, but um, I, don't, I don't really think Mr. Beast is set up that way. So uh, imagine a hierarchy, and at the top is... James Donaldson, Jimmy, Mr. Beast, if you're nasty. I think, like, literally to the side is his mother, Susan Parisher. She's compliance officer. She also handles HR for what that's worth. Uh, then we get to the next tier, and there's a, a secret COO and a secret CEO. Uh, so then he has a creative lead. I did not track who that was, and I frankly don't care. I have a kind of a feeling that maybe their creative team is Mr. Beast and a group of guys, including the one that uh, Dogpack404 was having issues with, uh, who, who took credit for dismissing Dogpack from uh, Mr. Beast's corporation. So then, I, here is my belief. So, uh, head writer, and then there's a creative team, but they're also the main talent. And then we have an offshoot where we get uh, where the contestants, extras, and guests are all like, controlled by the main talent creative team people. And, and then here's my theory for board of directors, if they even have one. Uh, of course, uh, Mr. Beast himself, James Donaldson, Jimmy. Uh, and then, of course, uh, his mother, Susan Parisher. Um, then LaCroix Hill, James Warren. And then probably a couple of the guys on the creative team, which uh, my understanding are typically his closest friends. And, and I think that's where my breakdown is on it. That kind of makes sense to me. Yeah, just based on what we've seen, right? And so what is the compliance officer? Well, it's it's a number of human resources things, uh, safety, etc. I have the feeling that um, at least until 2017, Mr. Beast as a corporation was pretty much still treated as if it was a small struggling channel on YouTube where there was really only one person making decisions and maybe some things weren't getting done. Uh, I feel like if taxes weren't being paid out of people's salaries or whatever the pay arrangements are, contracts, we would have heard years ago with IRS knocking on some doors. But I, I think the situation is more, uh, they got over their head, it grew too fast, and then they needed his mother to come in and take over that bit. But here's the thing, if you, I'm, and I'm trying to not go too far ahead of myself. Based on what we've seen in Dogpack 404 and Jake Waddle's videos, Mr. Beast's mother might be more of a paper pusher than anything else. Uh, she basically stays at home, wherever her home is, and, and files the employment paperwork, 
and, and make sure the taxes are paid and uh, signs off on compliance, whatever that may be for them. Honestly, I don't know what the woman looks like. As far as I'm concerned, she's a private citizen, so I'm not going to delve too deeply into her life. Uh, she, as far as I'm aware, she's also not been on screen. I, and then a reminder for those who are watching, uh, other than the stuff the theorist, you know, with Matt Pat came up with, I wouldn't even know who Mr. Beast is. So I'm basically just like you getting this blast in the face of all of these allegations uh, and trying to work with the information that comes out with those. Here is what I think the hiring process is. Um, hey, Jimmy, I have a friend I'm looking for a job. I think he could be useful setting up or I think he'd be fun to have in this cage. Uh, and then um, Mr. Beast goes, okay, hire him. And then <laughs> they tell Susan Parisher, Jimmy's mother, uh, hey, we're hiring this guy. You know, do the paperwork, make sure he gets paid. And I think that's it. I, I'm literally... So, uh, watching videos of complaints, people saying, well, the HR process was, if you had a complaint, it went to who you thought was in charge of the HR, uh, the mother, but she really just fed it back to Jimmy in the top, even if Jimmy might be the reason there's a problem. That's problematic in itself. So the solution to troublemakers within the company was to essentially shuffle them around. Uh, anybody who somehow deemed important or friend uh, would get sent to uh, an affiliate channel or um, or another place in the network uh, and uh, basically taken off site. And then when memories fade, uh, the person comes back uh, back to whatever position they may have had before or something sort of parallel. So there really was no firing for most people of uh, importance to uh, Mr. Beast, uh, the corporation. Uh, I... I I have a hard time separating what is good for Jimmy and what's good for Mr. Beast because it looks like it's all a click and what's good for Mr. Beast or Jimmy is good for Mr. Beast or vice versa. That delegates all the authority to Jimmy himself. Ultimately, uh, I think he makes all the decisions. The creative team, I imagine, is just like any writer's room or any bullpit, uh, any journal, you know, if you ever worked in newspaper or magazine, you just throw ideas at the wall and then uh, Jimmy goes, I like that one. Let's, let's do that one. Again, still operating basically as if it were a small channel. So, I mean, if that's the way things were, you know, if things aren't broken, don't fix them, I guess. So, uh, recently the employee manual was released to the public. Basically, uh, Mr. Beast wrote out uh, a long list of don't take no as an answer. And I think that negatively impacted the culture in the business. Because now you got a whole bunch of people alpha mailing it up. Uh, and uh, in some cases, maybe taking it too far and making any female employees or guests uncomfortable. Um, I'm not blaming the whole document itself. But I, I'm in, when you write something like that, you have to assume there is some type of corporate culture that makes that okay. So then let's, let's get to the talking about the La Quoya Hill and various other questionable hires. I don't think background checks were done. I don't think they were done at all. Because obviously if you're going, hey, here's my dude. Can he have a job? It's your word of mouth reference. No, nobody's doing a background check. Background checks are not particularly cheap. And if you do the whole package... You know, it's even more. The whole package of background check, by the way, is the criminal record check, and then you might want to do a, a credit check. Some some do for some reason. Uh, you might even want to do a drug test. Um, depends on the package you have with your provider. I don't think they have one. Going through this, this is all alleged, by the way. I I don't have 100% proof. I'm using the word of mouth of two individuals who used to work for the company, one for four years and one for a month. Let's say background checks were done. I have a feeling. They were more or less ignored, like, but I, 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 I feel like it wasn't even a thought. So I don't, I don't think anybody in their right mind would assume they were actually done. So recently, uh, the announcement was made that, um, they're going to hire professional HR management. We still end up with the question of, let's say they get this professional HR person in there. Who are they reporting to? Do, do they have autonomy? Because as we saw with... The mother, she just passed the issues on to 
her son, who more or less either handled him or delegated him to somebody uh, and, and blow her in the hierarchy. How is that really? I mean, a professional person handling the position doesn't really work if they're not given the authority to do the job. I'm not saying that they, they won't have the authority, but how long will that last? And that's why you hope you have a corporate structure with a board of directors where one day somebody might say, okay, for the good of the business, maybe Jimmy shouldn't be in charge anymore. Now, uh, there are a number of creators on YouTube who are, have sold their channels. Uh, Matt Pat uh, from The Theorist, again, being one. Um, Linus Tech Tips. I don't know if necessarily he sold the channel more than allowed somebody to buy in and become CEO. But it was the concept of giving a corporate authority power for the benefit of the creation. The problem is, and I have a feeling this might be the case, if you're a control freak, you don't give that up. And even if you foe give it up, like you say, okay, you can have these abilities. I have a feeling and an experience f firsthand. Uh, they never really give that up. When HR is bad, it ruins a business. Handling the way you, you, you manage your employees can ruin a business. Nothing good comes of micromanagement and nothing good comes out of running a significantly sized organization or corporation in this case as if you're still doing it out of your bedroom. Tell me in the comments your thoughts in this video. Did you like what you saw and how was your experience with it? Thanks for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.